Jonah Hill, a formerly known Hollywood good guy, starring in some of the most notable comedy films to date, including Superbad, Moneyball, and Don't Look Up, has recently been exposed for his controlling and manipulative behavior toward his now ex-girlfriend Sarah Brady. In a text thread currently making its round on social media, Hill tells Brady his boundaries, a misuse of the word, for what he meant to say was demands. He tells her that if she needs to be surfing with men, modeling, posting pictures in bathing suits, or having friendships with quote, unstable women, then a relationship with him is not something that would be in the cards for her. What people have pointed out is Brady a professional surfer and model, which would mean his demands would be impossible without abandoning her career. Her pictures on social media were what attracted him to her in the first place. His hypocritical and controlling nature has had people wondering if we could have caught this sooner. So this is the top 10 Jonah Hill red flags we shouldn't have ignored. At number 10 we have verbally attacking Christopher Mintz during his Superbad audition. Beloved actor Christopher Mintz, otherwise known as Fogel or McLovin in the movie Superbad, was apparently wildly mistreated by his co-star Jonah Hill during the audition process. Auditions are nerve wracking on a good day, but it certainly doesn't make them any easier when someone's being deliberately mean to you the whole time. Producer Judd Apatow remembered the audition saying Mintz was very caustic and attacked Jonah and did improvs insulting Jonah as per the character requested, but Jonah let his insecurity get to him, apparently not caring for Christopher's snags, getting back at him in ways that he certainly didn't have to. Seth Rogen said that Jonah immediately hated him, saying that he was messing with his rhythm and couldn't perform with that guy around. Apatow added that Jonah said, I don't like that guy and I don't want him doing it. And I said, that's exactly why we're hiring him. It couldn't be more perfect. The fact that it bothers you is exactly why we want him. Which was a true read because their dynamic and super bad definitely seems to have come quite naturally to the boys. Hill says about his experience with Chris, Chris was really, really amazing off the bat and I think he was just really annoying to me at the time and his apparent irritation was apparently grounds to try and get him rejected from playing the role. This whole situation is a display of Jonah's insecurity, not wanting someone in the room to be funny or cooler than him, and since Jonah's controversial texts have become public, Twitter users have commented on the situation with Chris, user Hoja Cat saying, I knew Jonah Hill was a red flag when I found out he hated this human chipmunk right off the bat. Like, damn, you're a hater. At number 9 we have DiCaprio's Revenge. Jonah co-starred alongside Leonardo DiCaprio in the 2013 film The Wolf of Wall Street, and their work together had cultivated in some pretty legendary, as well as concerning, pranks. Due to some rough treatment Hill received at Leo's hands, Jonah decided to plot some particular nasty revenge against him. Hill explained that the film contains scenes requiring him and DiCaprio to act out physical fights saying, he basically beat me up for six months and he's bigger than me so I couldn't really retaliate or cause any damage to him. Although this was in the sport of movie magic, Hill wasn't happy with having his ego damaged and came up with something devious. In one scene they shot near the end of filming, DiCaprio and Hill's character eat sushi and Hill's character is supposed to take the last piece and eat it when asked. But Hill went off script and told DiCaprio to eat it instead and DiCaprio complied. But as we know, movies don't happen in one take, so Leo had to eat the sushi again and again. Hill says that they had to take 100 takes of him eating sushi over and over again. And I was like, this is my revenge right here. Later that night, Hill's plan unfolded with DiCaprio puking up all of the sushi, and now, I know the man is a comedian, but making someone vomit because their character stage punches you seems a little bit extreme. Coming in at number 8 is his insults toward Jennifer Lawrence. On the set of 2021's most disappointing film, Don't Look Up, Jonah starred alongside Hunger Games X actress Jennifer Lawrence. The two didn't have what we would call an amicable relationship on set because behind the scenes, Lawrence recently revealed that working with Hill was actually really, really hard. She says that the difficulty she faced on set was due to quote, Hill's improv skills and on one day, dedicating an entire day to him just improving insults at the actress. Lawrence claims that he found his behavior funny and although I believe her, he may have just gotten lucky to have a co-star that finds being endlessly insulted a good time. Everything Jen says about Jonah's comedic genius almost seems forced so as to not offend any fans of the beloved comedian, and it's also kind of hard to criticize someone who claims everything they do is a joke. Now at number 7 is Jonah's use of a homophobic slur, and although this behavior is never okay, he added insult to injury by saying it in a pretty combative context. In 2014, Jonah became increasingly fed up with a photographer's comment about his outfit, as one photographer quipped mocking his floral print board shorts saying, I like the shorts though bro, they're pretty sexy. Apparently Jonah can't take an insult himself and decided to say the most offensive thing he could think of being that of a homophobic slur. This choice of words obviously does not line up with Jonah's values as the actor has been a very vocal supporter of gay rights and famously blasted Russia's anti-gay laws leading up to the Winter Olympics. However, that means that this is a definitive show of cognitive dissonance. Jonah appeared on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon to apologize for what he'd said, addressing not simply The Tonight Show's studio audience but all of humanity. And Hill solemnly said that if someone says something that hurts you or angers you, use me as an example of what not to do. Don't respond with hatred or anger because you were 
were just adding more ugliness to the world. And I assume Hill's apology was sincere, but many have speculated that this was simply a PR stunt to save face. Coming in at number 6 is Jonah's bad temper in interviews. An infamous sleek, uncomfortable interview Hill gave with the Rolling Stone in 2013 entitled The Doobie Brothers lighting up with the stars of This Is The End. The actor came across as obnoxious and prideful as he took himself too seriously. In the interview, Hill says, I've done one of the biggest challenges you can do in Hollywood, which is transition from being a comedic actor to being a serious actor, and I'm really prideful of that. Which, my god, could you stroke your ego a bit more? Many of Hill's co-stars and former interviewers warned the publication before interviewing the comedian, saying that he does this weird psycho staring thing at you. And Apatow described Hill as an angry nerd. When asked for tips on the interview process with Hill, Rogan replied, he is serious, he is, which I'm not, and I don't know how to approach him. It's a good question, which is strange considering the duo are seemingly friends and should know how the other acts in situations like this. During the course of the Rolling Stone interview, Hill refused to talk about his workout routine, telling the magazine it's of little relevance, but that was only the beginning as after a few more silly questions, Jonah lost it, saying to the interviewer, I'm not answering dumb questions, I'm not the kind of person. Being in a funny movie doesn't make me have to answer dumb questions, it has nothing to do with who I am. And while the questions were asked in a joking manner, it didn't seem out of place, especially since his co-stars each almost gleefully answered. And coming in at number 5 is Andrew Tate's endorsement of Jonah's comments. It's not Jonah's fault that Andrew decided to comment on this controversy, however, it's never a good sign when Tate's on your side. Regarding his expectations in a partner, the controversial social media influencer and convicted criminal known for his controversial opinions and self-proclaimed misogyny, Andrew Tate retweeted a post by Candace Owens defending Jonah Hill's leaked texts. Owens' tweet claimed that there's nothing wrong with Hill's desires in a partner and criticized women in society today. Tate's endorsement of Hill's behavior came as no surprise given his track record of provocative statements on social media and shows us with solid evidence that perhaps Jonah's opinions on how women should behave aren't necessarily ones that we should be promoting or agreeing with. At number 4 is Jonah's misuse of therapized language. In Brady's post of her ex-boyfriend's text messages, she highlights the problematic nature of Hill's texts, emphasizing his misuse of language regarding boundaries and suggesting that he would gaslight her to maintain control over her life, what she wears, her career moves, and her actions. Brady wrote on Friday that she posted the text screenshots as a warning to all girls and that Hill has misused the term boundaries and just how he intended to use the word. She went on to share the photo of herself in a two-piece outfit that she had previously removed at Hill's request, saying that it infringed on his relationship boundaries to have it posted, although it wasn't revealing in the slightest, simply showing a bit of midriff in her legs. And Hill also called for the removal of a video of Brady surfing as she was in a bathing suit, which Brady begged to keep up as it was her quote, best surfing video, and was not done with the intention of even receiving male attention. She also added a text thread between them where she shows Hill the removal of these posts to which he replied nothing more than good start. These acts of control are in no way classified as breaking partnership boundaries, but instead many a social media users have come forward saying that sometimes men go to therapy, receive knowledge of therapized language, only to spin its meaning to further abuse and manipulate their partners. Coming in at number 3 is the Stutz documentary. Jonah embarked on a documentary project in early 2022. Entitled Stutz is an insight into the psychological practice of Dr. Phil Stutz, showing the main techniques used by him throughout the years to help his patients live healthier, happy lives, and the interaction between him and Jonah. Many viewers have condemned the project, voicing the issues of such a friendly relationship with a paid psychotherapist. The doc was deemed a controversial display of the issues that can arise in this sort of client-therapist interaction, and the biggest concern being that elements of this film that claims to be well-researched account of Stutz therapy model could potentially result in a misguided understanding of psychotherapy in general. This documentary may have been an incredibly irresponsible piece of media to produce, and lines up with the aforementioned lack of respect when it comes to the importance of taking therapy seriously. Our runner-up on this list is the most widely known, but Jonah's career built upon movies that promote less than ideal themes. Although Hill is a comedian and has some leeway when it comes to upsetting topics, it seems that he often laughs at difficult topics instead of making any sort of valuable commentary about them, in turn making these things seem okay to engage in. Such topics such as racism, sexism, fat phobia, male chauvinism, and assault all seem to be on the table for discussion. Although these things are allowed to be talked about in a comedic manner, context matters and teaching young audiences that these things are acceptable is never a great thing to base your career off of. Which hey, maybe that's why he wants to be taken so seriously in interviews. Teaching a generation that it's not only okay but also funny to disregard and harass women, say offensive and hurtful comments, and break the law must serve as a red flag that this guy might not be that great. Our number 
one spot goes to his misogynistic and narcissistic tendencies. Sarah Brady's experience of dating Jonah Hill seems to have been rooted in his need to quote, seek out a fun, exciting girl full of life and light, and then try to destroy exactly what made those girls shine, as said by Twitter user Dr. Una McLevina. From Brady's text exchanges with Jonah Hill, it's clear that he intended to rob her of her whimsy and joy. Una continues by saying, for those who think Jonah is just setting boundaries, he chose to be with a surf instructor and then tried to control the thing she loved to destroy it. This happens all the time. These are the first steps to coercive control. Brady added that someone being an emotionally abusive partner doesn't mean they're a terrible person, as it often stems from their own trauma, but at the same time, it doesn't mean it's okay. Being aware of how someone may hide their intentions to control you or another person through making you feel as though they are the victim is incredibly important to know and be vigilant of. That is our top 10 list of Jonah Hill red flags that we shouldn't have ignored. Thanks so much for watching. Let us know if we forgot any in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.